and I'm really, really excited uh, today to introduce you guys to Sandy. Um, Sandy Newbigin is the, uh, he's a Hay House author. He's written, oh my God, I think it's 10 books and six of them are number one bestsellers. Uh, so he's a bit of a prolific writer and when it comes to meditation, uh, he certainly knows what he's talking about and um, he's just released his latest book, Body Calm, and I read it on the plane a couple of weeks ago actually and couldn't put it down. It was absolutely brilliant. I've you know, earmarked a gazillion pages and highlighted all sorts and I've actually <laughs> poor Sandy I emailed him um, a few days ago and said hey these are the questions I'd love to ask you today and I specifically referenced pages through the book that I was just blown away by and which actually really spoke to me around the subject of self-love and how how you know his really powerful meditation techniques can help us um, in the quest to, you know, indeed to to love ourselves more. So I'm so 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 excited to have Sandy on the line. I'm going to unmute you, Sandy. Are you there? I hope I am. Yes, you are. Hi. <laughs> oh, good. Good. Hi. So great to have you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for inviting me. And uh, hello, all these daring and mighty people out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're awesome. Um, so I know it's something like four o'clock in the morning for you right now because you're in Florida. Yes. <laughs> so good luck <laughs> if you've got a strong <laughs> coffee in hand. But I really appreciate you getting not. up so early. Oh, haven't you? Well, what's wrong with you? I think I don't even. I don't think Starbucks <laughs> opens until five here. I think it's even too early for Starbucks here. <laughs> right. Horrible nightmare. Uh, Sandy, yeah. it's so awesome to have you. Thank you so much. Um, like I was saying, I really, really did enjoy um, your Body Calm book. Uh, the irony of when I was reading it, I didn't tell you this, but um, I was on an airplane, and I actually hadn't been well, and I had an awful cough, uh, quite unlike me, and there's me wedged between two people on this plane, reading about Body Calm and, and how to heal my body. Meanwhile, <laughs> coughing up a lung all the way through it. It looked... Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in a way, you had a you know a cough, but it's good that you had the opportunity to to be apply it. Um, oh God, I was. I was actually applying your meditation technique while I was on the plane. I was sat there just trying to you know really be calm and tune into my body and and actually understand what this this barking at the world thing was that I had going on mm -hmm. through my cough. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. and that was awesome. Really, really great self awareness actually. Um, so, Sandy, where should we begin? Um, uh, as you know, the ladies in my community know, um, when I speak to self-love, I really, I believe that you know, self-love is all about loving all parts of us. So it's loving your mind, it's loving your body, loving your emotional self, and loving your spiritual self. Um, and I'm really interested, and I certainly saw this. Um, all the way through your book, I'm interested in how you believe meditation helps us to love all parts of ourselves more. Yes. Is that a question? That's a question. <laughs> Go. Well, you know, I think, I think you know, I think love is a, a confusing term. I think it's a, mm -hmm. a confusing word. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And you know, if you tell someone to love. Uh, the, the difficult and 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 what they perceive the negative the things that are happening in their life then it's quite a big ask you know because we have these ideas about what love is and we have these romantic notions about it and how even love has to be a positive feeling and things like that and really mm -hmm. if you want to get down to the bare basics of it I'd say that you know love is linked with freedom and and linked with harmony and, and what I mean mm -hmm. what I mean by that is that you know when we are uh, when we are willing to experience anything in its fullness and its completeness, um, then we have greater harmony with uh, within ourselves, uh, within our heart, mind, body, soul, and circumstances. And mm. through that harmony, um, there is an expression and experience of unconditionality. There is mm. an experience of a willingness to experience, essentially. Mm. And... And the less we are trying to um, manipulate and manage and control and 
push against life due to attachments to how we think life should be or how we should be, uh, then the less uh, experience of, of love we have. And so long story short, you know, I feel mm. that, you know, love is linked with freedom and it's also uh, actively linked with learning how to experience what I, what I call embodied calm as a holistic harmony, harmony within your heart, mind, body, soul, and life circumstances. And when, when you have that harmony, essentially you're, you're cultivating the ability to experience love within yourself and with life. God, I feel calmer just hearing you say that. That's so true. Doesn't it take the pressure off? Well, that's the point. Like I mean, taking away so, the control, the need to control. Exactly. And the need mm. to control comes from uh, a belief that we need to uh, fix things, change things, and improve things mm. um, so that we may eventually become something other than what we are right now. Mm. And we can, or we can make our life, our relationships, or, or whatever, something other than what we are right now. And, you know, meditation, uh, awareness, uh, you know, learning to, to love unconditionally is actually learning about how to find the balance between uh, being in harmony with what is while simultaneously not necessarily settling either because we are able to change things if we want to. So mm-hmm. there's this like not being a walkover, not just like, you know, giving up, not just like not bothering to make improvements or make you know make the most of our life that we've got it's not about that it's about learning how to have this inner harmony with what is while simultaneously uh using life to help us to what i call uh, you know show up step up and wake up and because you know it's not do you know what i'm trying to say it's not, it's not a passive thing it's an active uh, engagement with life but mm. with a with a healthy relationship with life that leads to an inner harmony with it. And with that inner harmony, what we find is we have a lack of inner conflict with life. Mm. And so for me, you know, one of the ways to uh, experience more love is to cultivate harmony. One of the ways to increase harmony is to reduce the amount of unconscious chronic conflict that goes on and, and it's uh, the, the, you know the inner conflict is really caused by our conditioning essentially yeah. uh, we've been conditioned growing up uh, what a good life looks like what a good human being is like <laughs> uh, yeah. what uh, what we have to be and what we have to do and what life has to do in order for it to be deemed lovable mm-hmm. and and through that conditioning process we are essentially taught uh, what we should allow mm-hmm. and what we should resist and what we should try to avoid and what we should try to uh, be, uh, be, be attached to uh, getting. And what happens is we end up with this inner uh, dynamic, uh, this inner push-pull dynamic uh, of resistance and attachment. And so that inner push-pull dynamic is what I've observed is what's really creating this inner conflict, which is standing in the way of our harmony uh, with life, our harmony with ourselves. And so, Mm. in other words, anytime we have a problem, it's because we're currently resisting something because we are attached to something else happening instead. Um, Whether that's we're resisting our current body, shape, weight, or condition because we're attached to some other body, shape, weight, or condition, or money, you know, you can name the list like usual, you know. It's whether mm. we're anytime we're any time we are in resistance and attachment, these are these are energetic forces that are this this other opposite sides of the same coin. Um, the degree to which you're attached to something is the degree to which you'll resist it. If you weren't mm. attached then you wouldn't resist and so on and so forth. So it's really yeah, yeah, yeah. this inner dynamic. But when we get stuck in the middle of that uh conflict, which people can get stuck in a conflict for you know, an inner conflict. And when I say conflict I mean an inner conflict between resistance and attachment you can get stuck in the middle of that for many many years and that mm. over time creates this ease and, and I've observed it creates uh, conditions uh, which are less than pre- preferable 
uh, God, you know, and in, exhausting, in, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, completely. It completely. You know, conflict blocks the chi of the body. It blocks the energy of the body. Uh, it drains mm-hmm. it. You see, when we're in conflict, we are caught in what I call a, a, a tension. Mm-hmm. Now, with, when, in meditation, you learn the difference between attention and awareness. Okay, so this is something that you, people listening can really start to play with. You know, uh, it's mm-hmm. so simple, but it's ethically huge. When we are in attention, um, our attention is narrow, and our attention tends to be scattered. It tends to jump from one thing to the next. And we're basically jumping from whatever catches your attention to the next thing that catches your attention. And so we might get, you know, a, a thought might pass through our mind and it grabs our attention, then an emotion, and we got in a physicalization, and we're just jumping around all day in attention, jumping from whatever's grabbing our attention. And attention, where, you know, energy flows where attention goes. We've heard this phrase before. And mm-hmm. so if we're, if, we're, if we're locked in attention and we're just scattered and j- jumping from one thing to the next, then energy is flowing out on what our attention's on. And that is very tiring, very draining, um, and not always very useful because you also move towards and become what you focus on the most. And so if your attention's on the scattered, confused, uh, negative, judgmental, or whatever, then we can tend to create that more in our life. However, awareness mm. is uh, what, something that everybody has. It's, it's wider. It's, uh, it's more inward. And when you move into more of an inner awareness, as opposed to being dropped into attention, you're less scattered, you're more, uh, more open and aware. Uh, what you find is energy starts to move in and you start to, the energy of your body starts to build up and you're able to actually help the body to heal and help your life to heal as well. Um, so with meditation, you're looking to learn to be less caught up in a scattered, you know, unfocused attention and have more uh, one-pointed awareness. Uh, hmm. It's what you develop o- over time, or especially using the meditation techniques that I teach, because they're all about learning to hone our uh, focus so that we may rest within our own self-awareness. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you know, uh, I mean, I love everything that you've just said. I, I, I'm particularly loving, you know, the whole resistance attachment dynamic mm-hmm. and how it's backwards mm-hmm. and forwards, backwards and forwards through that. You know, most people for mm-hmm. most of their lives until they kind of wake up into some level of, you know, conscious self-awareness. Um, I really liked what you were saying in the book about the importance of getting to know your true self because like you were saying, it's that conditioning, isn't it, within all of us of you know you you were saying you know what love is you know who we're meant to be how we're meant to show up in the world um and i and i guess that's sort of what you're saying isn't it our attention is so often on this conditioned um idea of how we're meant to be or how we're meant to feel or what love is or what even self love is um but when we go into awareness it's well who who am i really hmm. Um, can you can you speak to that a little bit more about the importance of getting to know our true selves and how that relates to to body calm? Okay. Yeah, I'd love to. So, in essence, um, our essence is not temporary. Um, mm. We have an underlying essence to ourselves. Some people call it the being. Some people call it the self. Uh, or some people call it awareness or, or whatever. But there's mm. within every single person we have temporary stuff that's coming and going and constantly changing. So like the surface of the ocean, you've got thoughts, they come and go. You've got emotions, they come and go. You've got the voice in your head that sounds like you, that that comes and goes. Um, Mm. You've got uh, loads of stuff in not just your internal, but also your external. You know, we can think that we are our career, but these things change. We are not the the name on our business card because that can change. Whereas there's an aspect of you that is unchanging and underlying and always present, irrespective of what job you happen to be doing. We're not our relationship status, whether that's single, married, in the process of being divorced or whatever. You know, these are, again, things that change, whereas there's an aspect of ourselves that doesn't. We're not our physical body, because, again, that changes. It goes older, gets bigger, smaller, less, or whatever. Uh, but, again, there's this underlying inner presence of something which mm-hmm. uh, doesn't uh, grow old. It's, it's been within you since before the day your body was born. It's never had a bad day. It's never gone faulty. It's never been sick. It's never 
it's never not loved actually it's never yeah. not experienced uh, uh you know it's never not been unconditional love yeah um, but what happens is we get distracted by what we are aware of uh we put all our attention on the thoughts the voice in our head the emotions coming and going and all this stuff happening in our life we we get so distracted by what we are aware of we we forget to leave any uh awareness for what's actually aware of what we mm-hmm. are aware of <laughs> in other words to be self-aware is to be aware of the aspect of the self that is aware and when you start to rest into the aspect of yourself that is aware, this underlying, still, silent presence of awareness that exists within every single person, you start to discover that that is a, an un, a undiluted, a full of potential, unconditional aliveness. Mm-hmm. It's uh, the, the fragrance of your being, you discover, is love. Now, you ask me, you know, why is it so important to get to know yourself in the context of love? Well, if you are relying on the voice in your head, which is basically uh, your self, you know, your self-image, if you're relying on the voice in your head, which is governed by your beliefs and your past conditioning and stuff, if you're relying on that, the voice in your head that is dependent on the past and future judgment, understanding, all that sort of stuff, when you base your lovability on that voice in your head then it, you may be waiting a very long time for it to finally decide that you're lovable. And even yeah. if it does say you're love, even if you manage to finally jump through all the hoops uh, of, your, of the mind, of the self-image and the judgments and the, yeah. the conditioning, if you manage to finally align up with that, then you'll only ever really have a, a loving uh, moment because the mind is constantly changing and it will at some <laughs> point find something. something else to, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we find something else at some point that needs to be yeah. fixed, changed, and improved so that you can yeah. again become deemed lovable by this yeah. ever uh, opinion changing uh, self image in mind. Yeah. And so, if you are going to try to experience unconditional love from the thinking mind, then it might not be possible because the mind actually relies on conditions and requirements and justifications when coming, forming its decisions and uh, conclusions. And so, you again, I'm just saying that, you know, you can obviously do things with your mind to think more positively and to, you know, change the unhealthy beliefs that might, or, you know, the negative beliefs that might be impacting your self-image and stuff. But ultimately, until a person rests into their real self, they won't really ever know what, what, what true unconditional love uh, feels like. Love, okay. is what the, love is what the fragrance of your being uh, feels like. Uh, mm-hmm. Love is what harmony feels like. Mm-hmm. Love is what it's like to be beyond the judgments in your mind, experiencing the isness of life. Yeah. Love is 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 not found within the hoops that our mind gives us, but by recognizing that there there is no hoop to jump through. That was just mm-hmm. a thought. It was just a thought that we had that we identified with. And we put so much more attention on that. We started feeling our thinking, and it felt very justified that, oh, my God, I do have to fix change in this so I can eventually feel love. But the reason that that felt so true is because we were in that moment feeling our thinking, which was, which was thinking negatively about yourself. But the minute you let go of that judgment, you start to recognize that the opposite of judgment is, sorry, it is, the opposite of judgment is love. Uh, when, we're, when we're no longer identified in all these judgments in our, in our mind, we are mm-hmm. seeing the judgments instead of being the judger. You know, they don't have to go away. You just need to have self-awareness. You have to see the judgment and go, oh, thanks for the opinion, but I'm going to hang out in this complete, uh, calm, con- you know, awareness <laughs> for a little while and yeah. bring your attention back to the present moment, which is where nirvana exists. It's where heaven exists. It's where your real self exists. It's where love exists. It's right here, right now. But if we never return to the awareness that is, aware of the present one occurring and only exists right now, if we never become self-aware, then we can always be chasing the end of the rainbow that the mind creates. When actually mm-hmm. we are, we were born at the end of the rainbow. We, it, our awareness exists there permanently. And there's really nothing you ultimately need to fix, change or improve in order for you to experience uh, love. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, totally, com- utterly, completely hearing you on all of that. And I know for myself that whenever I experience myself as love and whenever I feel able to, you know, really drop into really loving and appreciating myself and feeling that freedom and that harmony, it's when I'm in, I'm in some kind of meditative state. Now, whether that be actually going and sitting and meditating um, or whether it be, you know, for me, I, you know, I could, and it happened to me just the other day, I'll go and sit on, you know, on a rock at the beach and I'll just look out to the horizon. And I, like you said, I just sit in, a, in awareness rather than in attention. And just that awareness, that expansiveness, just, just looking out and being completely present to the moment and tuned into the truth of who I am as a spiritual being, that's when I'm able to drop into experiencing real love and incredibly it's it's an incredibly moving experience isn't it when you actually sit in that presence of love because you realize that what this is all about that's why we're here and you stop pushing and you stop being in conflict and you stop being in resistance and you can just breathe and be in it um but for me, like it's not just sitting and meditating. It's it's like you know, it's that piece for me. You know, looking out at the horizon, or maybe it's, you know, for some people it's going for a run. Uh, for some people, it's just losing themselves in painting. Um, it, it could be anything, couldn't it? But I know you specifically focus on um, various meditative techniques, right? Um, uh, I, and, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry go on. What were you going to say? Absolutely. I think I think you know. They're essentially love is what harmony feels like, uh, mm-hmm. and what your real self feels like. Mm-hmm. And when we leave that, we will, we 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 enter into the conditioning that we picked up along the way, and that mm-hmm. conditioning is is subtly justifying our conflict within life, within ourselves. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, what we're really going to do is to recognize that. To, to love unconditionally is to fully embrace the moment that we're in. And yeah. that, you know, to, to really recognize that, you know, there's actually, uh, life is happening, life is being created for us, believe it or not. It might not feel mm-hmm. that way, but that's because we're not letting it be created for us. Mm-hmm. But life is already being created for us, and it's being created to be experienced. Yeah. And I personally believe and I trust that my life exists to teach me how to love. You know, that, that is because to, to, to really fully love is to know thyself, is to live in harmony, is to live awake, is to live beyond conditioning. Because we've been conditioned out of it, to be honest. It's, it's a funny yeah. thing. Um, we've been raised uh, and told what a good life looks like, and, and then we're either... Uh, forcing life to look how we believe it should, or look, you know, forcing ourselves to to be how we think we should, to live up to some sort of mind-made expectation or whatever. Mm. And that's really the journey of life: is to see all these, you know, the veil, um, see all these conditions, see these requirements, these uh, all these hoops that we've, we've picked up along the way, and to recognise that actually, you know, I, I, you know, I once. Um, read a quote by Anthony Dumello, one of my favorite authors, um, spiritual teachers. Mm-hmm. And he said, that it, it, we're not here to change the world. We're here to learn how to love it. And, mm-hmm. and I think that's such a powerful quote. You know, we're not here to change the world. We're here to learn how to love it. And I'd say, you know, you're actually not here to change yourself. You're here to learn how to love yourself. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you, you know, if someone comes to me and says, you know, I really want to change something about my life, I will, I will, I will honor that uh, when I'm working with them. But I will say, look, our first stop is for you to not need to change anything about your life. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, how do we get you into a state of um, being more in harmony with what is? Because, you know, if people aren't careful, they will spend their whole life moving the furniture of their life around. And they'll never actually get quite get around to actually sitting down and enjoying what what, what is. Mm, and seeing that what's being brought to them is their opportunity to be taught how to love. I would say that every single thing in everyone's life on this call, right now, and by that I mean your current career, your relationships, your finances, your health, everything in your life mm-hmm. right now, is all set up perfectly to help you learn how to love more fully. Yeah. And 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 if we can have that um, approach, our our relationship with life 
is it becomes more important than our managing of life. Uh, mm. We start to see that actually first things first, I need to uh, explore what, what it actually means to learn how to be more uh, in harmony with what is. When I have that inner harmony, harm, harmony, harmony. I'm uh, sorry, it's four in the morning here. <laughs> and when you have, You're doing very well. <laughs> when you have the inner harmony, um, you will be amazed at how much energy, how much more energy you have, because so much energy is used up in conflict. Um, and that's and then, and so in the book I have like the meditation technique. But part two of the book is quite a fat section, and it's called uh, Harmony Heals. And in there. I kind of co- uncover like the the seven secret sources of stress, but essentially these are the seven secret subtle ways that we end up not loving life, uh, because <laughs> because but you know these are the the seven conflicts <clears throat> that we can occur mm. that occur, occur within us that we're not aware of. Um, and so yeah, it's it's a it's a it's an opportunity to to start to recognize that seeing the world with you know all filled eyes. And welcoming life, however it may look, is really the key to uh, to living in love. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Sandy, you, I mean, obviously, body calm is is all about um, well, is is guiding us towards a meditation technique um, that you believe helps us to actually heal our body and stay healthy, and 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 then connect to all that you've just spoken about, connect to, to love, to freedom, to that holistic harmony and so on. How do we motivate ourselves? I mean, I want you to talk to us a little bit in a minute about your meditation techniques, but how do we motivate ourselves to actually sit in meditation or commit to time to being in that deep self-awareness where resistance and attachment don't exist? How do we motivate ourselves? Because life's busy. We've got you know stuff going on. Um, yeah, how? I mean, first of all, I mean, <laughs> well, uh, you know, let life mo- let life be your motivator. Uh, mm-hmm. You will um, if 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 you're normally people don't wake up from comfort. Uh, if you look at if I look at trends, um, you know, most people don't wake up to the the truth of reality, uh, wake up to the love of themselves, uh, just, you know, wake up uh, from the illusion, <laughs> the maya of mm. life. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't tend to do that from comfort. They usually have some sort of motivational factor. They usually have something that they're finding difficult in their life. They might be feeling stressed, feeling hard to sleep, uh, having conflict in the relationships, uh, scared about something, you know, have anxiety, or well, there might be some sort of motivational factor. They might just have a sense you know, they've done a lot with their life, they're successful, but there must be more to life than this. And they see the years passing by and they kind of question, you know, is this enough or would I be happy if this is my lot? You know, if I don't, you know, I just repeat this cycle until I die. You know, is that enough for me or do I feel there must be more to life than, than this? And um, so there's, there's many motivational factors, but in essence, uh, my, my personal one that I'd like to leave people with today is this. I believe that meditation is, is equally, if not more important, than eating, sleeping, and drinking uh, enough fluid. Uh, because without eating, sleeping, and drinking, we, we don't have life. Um, and without meditation, we don't have a life. Uh, and what, what I mean by that is that meditation helps us to learn how to let go of the thinking mind, be less identified in, uh, in, in our thinking. Now, when we're thinking, we are lost in the past and future. Even if you're thinking about now, you're still missing the present moment because there is no such thing as a present moment thought. All of our thoughts are about the past and future, even thoughts about now, because the moment has to have happened for the mind to be able to know what's happened so it can commentate about it. And so the moment, the mind is always one step removed from, from life, from reality. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to live my life one step removed from life. I want to live my life fully engaged uh, in life, experiencing life. This is a this, this is a life we've got, and we, we don't want to yeah, miss it. Yeah, this is it. Mm-hmm. By, by 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 thinking about life instead of actually fully living it. And so for me, uh, meditation uh, helped me come back to life, and mm-hmm. it helps many people come back to life. And if you need some motivation, then just ask yourself: you know, Am I? Is it enough for me just to think my way through life, or do I want to discover what's beyond this veil of the mind? This these thoughts about the past and future all the time, this thinking about my moment, 
So I want to experience the, the real vibrancy of what it means to be born alive in this human physical form. And so uh, with that in mind, uh, I also make sure that the meditation techniques I teach are um, uh, accessible and are easy and fun and enjoyable and mm. can be done with the eyes open and closed because let's face it we spend most of our day with the eyes open and so we it, we need to make sure that we're not uh having to rely on just you know 15 20 minutes of closed eye meditation uh to try and get our fill of our real self and reality and we want to actually learn how to be our real self uh resting aware of reality throughout our day and so meditation mm. is about cultivating that habit to to let go of thinking mind come into the present moment uh, and live from from our, our realness, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell you what, I'm quite keen, if you're available, for you to share a simple meditative technique with us. Would that be cool? Yes. Yeah, okay. So before we do, I'm just going to say, um, ladies on the phone, um, we do have time to take questions. So before, while Sandy is explaining some, uh, a meditation technique to us, if you do want to talk to him, um, you can talk to me too, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised some of you have some questions to ask Sandy. So if you would like to, just press star 2 on your phone, and that will raise your hand. Uh, and I can see I've got a little bit of technology here. I can see that your hand is raised wanting to speak to him. So you just press star 2 on your phone. And if you're on the webcast and you'd like to ask him a question, you can type those questions in and they come up on this screen here in front of me and I can read those out to Sandy as well. So have a think about it. If you want to speak to him, um, press star two or type in your questions. Um, okay, Sandy, so what are you able to share with us? Well, you know, I know you said meditation technique, but it's, it, we really don't have time to honor, mm -hmm. uh, it, to teach the meditation. But what came to me no. when you were talking just then is... Um, something I want you to share about uh, two things really um, one is on courageous contentment hmm. and like the uh, that. because yeah because contentment equals uh, love again uh, when mm -hmm. we are uh, in harmony and when when uh, we are experiencing contentment we, there's a greater sense of love now you know being in conflict with our current life circumstances causes a huge amount of stress bad health and unhappiness and you know, although some aspects of our life may not be to our liking, if healing and love is really what we want, then it's really paramount for us to be willing to be uh, learning how to be at peace with our present moment. Now, contentment comes from letting what is be enough, uh, exactly as it is. Think about that for a minute. You know, the formula for contentment. I don't know anyone that doesn't want more contentment in their, in their life. And the formula for contentment is simply to learn how to let this moment be enough exactly as it is. Whereas discontentment obviously comes when we fall into the trap of believing that we need more uh, than what the present moment has to offer. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, completely. Now, having a clear purpose and having big goals is, is fantastic. In fact, having a clear purpose is actually uh, beneficial for health, vitality, and even people with purpose tend to live longer. Um, but it's when our intentions uh, move from love to fear, desire to desperation, and from want to need, that they start to play havoc on our health and, and happiness and sense of love. And so there's nothing wrong with loving and desiring and wanting. But when, the, when it turns to uh, fearing the loss of something, in other words, we're not really loving because we're actually in fear, or if we move from desire to actual desperation and, and need, that's when we start to become in conflict with life again. And so... What I recommend is, is for, for cultivating contentment is to um, recognize your realms of resistance yeah. and acknowledge your areas of attachment. Now, so you might want to get a little bit of paper out and something at some point and you know, make a list of health, relationships, career, money, uh, yeah. environment, or whatever. Uh, and then of each one, explore what, what, area, what things about your health or your relationships or your career or your money or whatever it might be resisting. So make a little list of what you might be resisting about your health. For example, um, are you resisting your physical shape, weight, uh, some sort of condition, energy levels or whatever? Yeah. So whatever, just mm -hmm. write down what you might mm -hmm. be resisting and mm -hmm. also what you think you might be attached to. Now, attachment 
it's sometimes a bit more subtle, but it's the sort of things when you catch yourself saying, I can't be happy until. Yeah. Yeah, I can't love myself until. Mm-hmm. That is uh, highlighting an attachment uh, because it's basically waiting for something else to be fixed, changed, or improved before. And that's what attachment is. And so you might want to write down, you know, when, what do I think needs to be fixed, changed, or improved before I can love myself, before I can experience love or love my life, and make a little list there. And basically what you do with your list is you uh, do what I call a quick start cure. This is a page 143 of the book. What do you call it? A quick? It's called a quick start cure. It's one of the quick start cures in the book. Mm -hmm. And this one, this this quick start cure happens to be the one called courageous contentment. Okay. Now what you do is that once you've got your list, let's say you find something that you might be resisting, Mm -hmm. then what you do is you, um, or attached attached to. So for mm-hmm. resistance, you would think you'd think silently or say to yourself the following sentence: "I can prefer to not want this without pushing it away." Okay, mm-hmm. I can prefer to not want this without pushing it away. Now, why is that little statement useful? Well, because it's the opposite of resistance. It, it honors your opinion, but it, it recognizes that it's the inner act of pushing it away that's actually creating tension and discomfort and unease within yourself. And so when you stop pushing something away, you can still prefer not to want it. You can still take action to do something about it, but you don't have to have this inner pushing away. Do you understand? This inner resistance. It's that inner resistance that creates the tension and stress and discomfort within us. If you find something that you're attached to, something that you, you know, I can't be happy until, you get that list, you know, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then for attachment, you want to think or say it loud to yourself, this is um, this this following sentence. I can want this without needing it. I can want this mm. without needing it. Now the reason I'm showing this because it's really useful over a telephone call like this. Um, mm. To actually, you, just a re- simple takeaway you can take away today. Like just catch yourself if you're like you know feeling like you're attached or you know needy or you've moved from want to need or desire to desperation or love to fear and just take a moment to think. You know what? I can want this without needing it. And then what you can do is you can just rest into uh, the present moment and consider what your inner experience is like if you let the moment be enough exactly as it is. And if you just let the moment be enough exactly as it is, what you can find is a greater sense of calm, contentment and completeness starts to rise up within yourself just by doing this very simple exercise. I can just feel myself, my whole energy, just having this massive exhale moment right now. <laughs> but it's just, I mean, I'm sitting here recognizing, and here's you may, you know, so consciously aware, um, almost, I mean, maybe you can speak to this actually, almost it, it, sometimes exhausted by my level of conscious awareness. <laughs> You know, but what I see, though, within that, what it is, is the resisting, attaching, atta- you know, resistance attachment piece going on. Yeah. I, could, I cannot emphasize it enough. I, I mean, yeah, the book it itself highlights sense. lots of subtle, the book highlights lots of subtle areas uh, where we might be resisting or attached. And then it mm. comes all together in chapter 14 with the embodying exercise. And the embodying exercise is the way whereby we have, yes, we've got the meditation technique, but there's also a targeted way, a targeted way to work specifically on a, a conflict and clearing the conflict and bringing about mm-hmm. greater harmony and happiness. And that can, you, you can clear the conflict in relationship with any physical conditions. You can use the body exercise to understand, you know, the mind-body connection and what the body's been trying to tell you and teach you through the conditions it's created. Um, and you can really, within a couple of questions within that exercise, find out you know why you have a sore neck, why you've got IBS, why you've got a skin condition, why you know if there's a why you've got a cough, it, why you're barking at the world, yeah, it. exactly. <laughs> Whatever it might be, it, it helps you to discover yeah. what that the underlying reason is. Then it works by helping you to to clear the resistance and attachment, um, and then it's a, there's a lovely part of that process where you bring in uh, a, a positive virtue. Uh, which you you embody, and that's why it's called the embodying exercise. And so it's less about learning and, uh, you know, intellect. It's more about embodying love, peace, forgiveness, patience, harmony, uh, all these wonderful virtues. And in doing so, we're just 
learning how to love unconditionally and we're learning how to be in harmony and we're creating harmony. And, and through that, it's impossible uh, for physical conditions to exist. There's just there's no soil for sickness left within us. We are raising our vibration up with the help of these, uh, the embodiment of these virtues. We're raising our vibration to a point where the vibration of the conditions, uh, both internally and externally, cannot exist anymore. We're embodying a higher state vibration, which just doesn't allow the old conditions to to continue. They just it, 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 they just can't exist there. Uh, so the embodying exercise is really powerful. But I want to emphasize that you know body camp isn't just a meditation technique. It's it's based in meditation. It's based in awareness. But it, it, there's uh, it, the embodying exercise is a really powerful way to to really uh, bring about greater harmony. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. And I'm loving courageous contentment. Mm, Because it is courageous, isn't it? Because it does go against all of our conditioning and programming. It it does take a lot of courage, doesn't it, to really go, sort of sit with everything that we've not been taught or shown. um, It takes a lot of bravery and courage, yeah. Actually, that's why I called it courageous contentment, because it actually takes a lot of you know, it takes a, a degree of courage to actually be willing to step beyond the conditioning to let yeah. this moment be enough exactly as it is. You know, yeah. our, our parents or whoever raised us taught us what a good life looks like, um, yeah. which we then started having to try and live up to. But then the media organizations and the marketing departments mm-hmm. also got on board with our materialistic indoctrination. And we mm-hmm. basically have been taught to never be satisfied. Um, yeah. You know, commercialism uh, requires, capitalism requires, of mm-hmm. humanity to never be satisfied, to mm-hmm. always need more, to always need to buy more, to always want to spend more. Uh, as soon as they've got it to spend, they you know go to the shops and spend you know mm-hmm. at this holiday and that holiday and the next thing you know is constantly yeah. being told to to be unsatisfied, and yeah. so it does take a degree of courage to actually go. You know what? I'm going to step away from that uh, that you know community of discontentment and I'm going to find contentment within myself uh, and it's a beautiful thing it's a beautiful it thing to, to do it is and it's also but it's also the courage to um, sit with what is in terms of our dark side as well I mean it's, it is beautiful to sit with this beautiful pure loving expansive self that we are but you know sometimes to get to that place we have to actually experience the tough, shitty stuff about ourselves, right? And that that awareness, I mean, it's so brave to choose to sit and and experience those parts of us that we've been, you know, <laughs> burying deep because that's, you know, again, back to conditioning, that's not how we're meant to show up. That's not who we're meant to be. That's That <laughs> that doesn't equal good or good enough. You know, it's that bravery and that, that courage to look at those parts of us that are who we are. Um, well, that's the philosophy of body cap. You know, you just described right. it there. You know, I, because if you are doing any of this work to get to the other side, to get to these, you know, ideal kind of ideas of being, uh, mm. you're actually still in conflict because you're resisting what is, and you're try, you're still attached to try and uh, get somewhere else different. Um, it's it's a very subtle thing, this. But what you're really learning to do is you're learning how to have the ability to comfortably be uncomfortable, how to comfortably exactly. experience anything. Um, mm. You know, when we're, when we're willing to experience anything, we have freedom. The freedom is the willingness yeah. to experience anything. And yeah. when we have the oh, willingness to experience... Oh, I've got goosebumps. <laughs> yeah, when oh we have God. willingness to experience anything, mm-hmm. the funny thing about life is we, don't, we no longer have to keep experiencing everything. Uh, yeah. Because it's finally, you know, when we're willing to, to fully experience whatever life is bringing us, the minute we're actually willing to fully experience it, and this is where uh, the root of the embodying exercise is actually the willingness to fully experience uh, the resistance and attachment. When we're actually willing to actually experience it fully, uh, the conflict dissolves. Hmm. And uh, because we're no longer you know, resisting because we're attached to something else. We're actually willing to finally experience it. And like I said before, I believe life is happening to be experienced. It's being created to be experienced. Our job is to learn how to uh, to not be scared of life, not be scared of our emotions, not be scared of our own power. We are here to live fully and completely 
and to spiritualize the human in the time that we've got available, to download these virtues into physical form, to embody uh, these higher states of, of God consciousness, uh, love, peace, mm-hmm. freedom, oneness, not just intellectually, spiritually, conceptually know about these spiritual concepts, but to actually embody them. Uh, and through the embodiment of them, we literally uh, wake up, we step up, we show up, and we fulfill the purpose for which we were born. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't. I, I, <laughs> um, divine. So has ever been, has ever been shy? Has, has, has ever been shy, or do we? Actually Everyone's have being so shy, Sandy. I haven't got one hand raised, and I can see a whole list of names on there. Um, there is. Okay. Hold on, let me just go over to the Q and A. It's refreshing. And there's only one comment. Ladies, we've got Sandy on the phone. Um, okay, Natasha, who, oh, gorgeous Natasha, who's now living in Madrid, happily married, is her story. She recently was married. Uh, she's on all the calls. Um, Natasha says, just a massive thank you for reminding me how beneficial it is to live in harmony, letting what is being enough. My mantra for the week. Awesome. Awesome. Some of yeah. Awesome. That's totally. brilliant. Awesome. Great. Well, I'm 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 at peace with whatever people want to do. If you just want to listen and and not yeah, say that, no, I've just at all. Um, you know, we've I've enjoyed my chat with Katie. I'd really love to have chatted to you too, but uh, <laughs> I could we could listening. we could keep going. I mean, we could talk for hours on this subject. I think. Um, yeah. I'm so incredibly grateful um, for your time this morning. Not least that it's four o'clock in the morning for you, um, <laughs> and you've not even had a coffee. Um, but, you know, Sandy, you really have just, I mean, I, I've just got tingles right now, and I, I'm feeling this huge surge of energy through me of just just how wonderful it is to be reminded again of this truth. I mean, I, I, I mean, I live and breathe what you're speaking about, and you've just taken it to a whole other level for me um, oh, wow. of understanding and and. Mm. Actually, no, it wasn't understanding for me it was, because it wasn't so intellectual. It was I feel it deeply. I feel it yeah. more deeply. I feel it so yeah. much more deeply right now. And um, I, I just want to go and I, I want to scrap everything that I had to do today. <laughs> and I just want to go and sit and be with me and experience the beauty of, of the truth of who we are and why we're here yeah. and what this is all about, you know. Um, and while you're so doing awesome. that, we read chapter 14. I will. I will. I'm going to get back like, to chapter 14. Because we, we've known each other for a few years now, but I mean, I feel completely different to the person I, I, that met you a few years ago. Um, know. You know, when I first met you, I, I was I, intellectually and I was, you know, I, had, I, I knew stillness, you know, I knew silence. I was intellectually, uh, I knew I could I could communicate this stuff. But I think what what's connected with this is, you know, I'm feeling it now. I'm I'm really deeply embodying it more and more every day. But look and at what you've it, done in the last year. I mean, we had a brief chat before we came on the call, and you look at the way you've lived your life in this last year. I don't know if you mm-hmm. want to speak to that quickly and let the, the ladies know what you've been doing, but you have been full talking about embodying this. Like you 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 embody it completely, don't you? Well, you know, I'm I'm doing my best in every given, given moment to to play. I mean, basically, I split up with my girlfriend at last Christmas, and um, and it was because it was a compromised relationship. I was mm-hmm. I was not able to uh, be free, uh, mm-hmm. be me within that mm-hmm. relationship. It wasn't comfortable for her if I was being me, and I had to play down in order to um, be in rapport, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, and I always felt like I was wrong somehow because of the way I <laughs> the way I was because it wasn't fitting but actually I just need to to have the courage to um to, to move on and, and that one decision alone um led to so many different things happening. Uh, I've actually you know two things happened for me in that I had to let this year I had to let go of my relationship and I had to let go of my stability of a home. Now yeah. I've got plenty of money in the bank. It's not a, a, like I'm homeless. But mm. it's just the way when I when I let go and I surrendered and I trusted. What what happened is I've ended up just being on the road in service for the last year. <laughs> Literally, yeah. um, you know, I've not. Uh, yeah, I've just been. Yeah, I've been in America like five times, 
Greece, Turkey, Spain, all all over the place, UK, mm-hmm. Scotland, England, you know, Ireland, Wales, you know. It's just, <laughs> it, it's, but but what I'm the way that what I'm trying to explain is, you know, these are two things in my life that I thought I need, and I couldn't be happy without. I couldn't be comfortable without. And I, you know, and I personally, this is not for everyone. Obviously, you don't have to do this, but it's just personally, I saw that I actually had to let go of these things I thought I needed uh, that I was attached to, that I was living in fear of ever being without. Um, I had to let go then to discover uh, stability within and to learn how to live in harmony with what is. And uh, really? so, yeah, currently in Florida, um, just for a couple of weeks, and now I'm heading back this week to to find somewhere to live. Uh, but to be honest, <laughs> if it doesn't happen... No, don't ever that, settle yeah. down. Live the dream. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's nice to have both, but you know, again, it's like it's a funny thing, you know, like it's just it's so enlivening to be uh, literally um, being guided by what is unfolding in front of you, and it's quite an extreme way to do it. Uh, and uh, yeah, but you've embodied your truth. That's what this year has been about for you: is really embodying your truth. And that's what, you know, everything that you teach, everything you speak about, all of the techniques that you pass on to people, you know, it's ultimately, it's all about embodying each of our own individual truths and and being courageous and brave enough to go out and be that person in the world, not that conditioned self, but that person. And I could cry right now because I'm so excited about Mm. this topic. (laughs) (laughs) This is, this is, you know, this is the message that, I want every person, not just women, but the person in the world to to know um, and to believe. And, and like you said, you know, life exists to teach us how to love. And you are, you are doing it in your own unique way. And it's awesome. You've got to keep doing that. I'm doing it my way. Every person on this call is on this call because they're trying to figure out how to do it in their own way. And I The funny thing is so that awesome. life is trying to... Yeah, exactly. But I think, you know, when you let go, when you when you re- clear the conflict, I cannot emphasize this enough. You know, when you clear the resistances and attachments, uh, when you embody the virtues, uh, you know, like it's just a part of the, the process, what you find is that you're able to trust life. You know, you already know what your way of being is, your natural way to be, believe it or not, but you don't let yourself go there. Uh, yeah. and, 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 and we don't let ourselves go there um, for, for, for multiple reasons. Uh, but when we let go, life brings us our, our natural way to be. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's like it's presented on a silver platter. Um, it's a miracle. <clears throat> yes, it is, actually. Yeah, we're, it is. we're living, you know, my friend says that the world is built on magic, not rock. Mm. And, I, and I love that phrase, you know, mm. uh, the world is built on magic, not rocks. And and so switch off the news, uh, go inside yourself, uh, rest into your awareness, uh, clear any inner conflicts, uh, very quickly to do, uh, live in awareness, and, and you will discover that, um, you know, the kingdom of heaven is within. Seek that mm-hmm. now and all else genuinely is added. Yeah. And read Sandy's latest book. It's my tenth one, and I, I do feel it's like a, a bringing together of lots of things over the last decade of discovery. And uh, I'm, I'm proud of this one. I don't know. Yeah, it really it's, does, gonna, it's either going to flop or fly, but it's definitely it was important for me to write, and it served its purpose for me when I wrote it. Um, you know. Yeah. What, you know, what happens next uh, is well, you've is just not up you've to just me. woken up to a whole other level by writing it, right? I mean, that's what writing books is about. I know when I finished my yeah. one book, my one baby, who I'm so proud of, but that was, <laughs> you know, God, that took me to my a whole new level as well. Hey, Sandy, before we finish up, and I know we've w- sorry. That's why I write. Yeah, totally. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, it's another level of it's another way of knowing yourself, isn't it? Actually, spend I, that, I write my, my meditation is I write you know, med, when I write like meditation. Yeah. Um, no, it's 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 incredible. Like, I'm really very fortunate that that's one of the ways that God wanted to express through me. Yeah. Uh, well, through the written word and communication, and uh, I, I'm excited for the next book. But it's uh, having patience 
and not just spending my whole life writing, but actually, you know, now, you know, being in the world, living, and, and the new book's being written right now, it's just not being typed. Um, yeah, so, uh, absolutely. And, and that's the same for you, too. Your next book is being written right now, but it's just not, yeah. you're not just sitting yeah. You're not just typing it down. Ah, it's so exciting. I know, I know. <laughs> hey, we've actually got just a couple of quick um, people, people have written in here. Uh, Sally, oh, my sister in Sydney. Hi, Sal. Uh, says, thanks, Sandy. Loving doing your mind detox training. When are you coming to Australia? Well, I was hoping to come out uh, in uh, January when my uh, friend's there. Um, mm -hmm. But uh we don't think it's going to it seems so busy with the tour we never actually got around to organizing it um right. if, you're so in sydney, if you're in sydney i would recommend that you give katie a call or uh, sorry a message or me a message my my the person one of the one of the miracles that's happened in my life is i met a guy called peter blake and he's an amazing body worker and he was uh, instrumental in bringing together the embodying exercise for this book we just taught yeah. a course in london okay. Uh, we taught a course in London uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, sorry, uh, 70 odd people there. It was an amazing two days. It, half of them have already signed up for the May course I'm doing, embodying uh, wow. calm. It's called. And Peter happens to be in Australia right now, and he's going to be in Sydney doing some one-on-one -on -one sessions. So um, you can oh, have God. the next best thing kind of thing. So so oh, send an email. I'll put you up in touch with uh, Peter. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you can work with him when he's in Sydney later in, in January time. He's, he shows up in Sydney. Beautiful. Okay. Beautiful. So, Sally, Sally actually practiced a mind detox on me the other day. It was really powerful. Really powerful. I'm hoping to come out to the, uh, you know, I want to get, you know, um, remember the, the, the Calm Academy, Sally, is, is set up differently now. So all the, to become a mind calm coach or a body calm coach, in other words, a body calm or mind calm meditation teacher, it's all online. Um, but you have a, your own dedicated coach trainer who works with you over Skype. Um, so anyone in the world can, can do the coach meditation teacher training courses. So Sally, you don't have to wait for me to come. Just uh, get well, going she's with the she's body training, cam. Um, she's actually registered. She's doing it now. You're, you're registered doing the body cam coach training? Oh, no, Mind Detox she's doing. Mind Detox, yeah. So Mind Detox uh, is something else. It's a body oh, cam is Sorry. the most recent thing. So once she's done that, she might want to consider doing the body cam. Ah, uh, stuff. There you, go. you can start using the embodying exercise and the directories and all all this stuff we've talked about today. Yeah, amazing. Anyway, I can I can see her doing that. And then we've got uh, one other uh, Eleanor uh, from Cyprus says hey. the question. Um, yeah, no, Eleanor's awesome. Uh, people are like mirrors. So if a relationship doesn't work and you try and keep trying, how do you know when ti when it's time to let go? You did that, so it would be um, nice to let us know, too. Okay, yeah. Well, what I find is um, if I don't know what to do right now, now is not the time to make the decision. Mm. So, God, that's so, a good piece of advice. I like that. So, you know, one of the biggest things is, is learning to trust um, that, you know, if, if I'm not sure on what to do right now, it's because I need to live more to get to a point where I do know. And um, we're often prematurely trying to come to a decision. Um, and what you'll find is if you are, um, there'll be a point where by the next thing will be handed to you in a silver platter. Um, it might be them turning around to you and saying, so shall we just split up then? Or or it <laughs> arise, or you having a bit of an argument or something and it rising up inside you and just, and you would have to take a lot of effort to not let these words out your mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we're over or... Um, to make sense, what I'm saying is there's a point where life will give it to you and all you have to do is claim it in that moment. Um, so it doesn't need to be much force or trying or rushing life to get to that point. Um, but that's, that's my kind of top tips for that is essentially if you don't know what to do right now, unless you're in physical harm. You know, obviously, if you're being physically abused, then get yeah, out Yeah, yeah, get out. <laughs> yeah. Someone that can help you get out. Uh, that will come around your house and take you out <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if it's not in a physically violent or an emotionally violent situation and you're just like not sure if you're on the same path or if it's if it's the right for you or whatever, then it's more about, you know, recognizing, well, maybe there's there's more, uh, there's some more life to be lived before uh, it, uh, it's the, I know exactly what, what to do. That's mm. why, although, you know, 
my last relationship, I, I had the signs relatively early. It took me to two years and actually to get to a point where it was the only option. Like it was like the best and only given option. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But but I didn't want to, I didn't just jump ship at the first hurdle or the first issue. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, there's still still got a, it's still useful and very useful to have commitment. <laughs> Um, and not be, you know, having a back door the entire time that you're kind of waiting to walk through. Yeah, but like you know, she's saying, when she's trying and she keeps trying and keep trying, that's that's different, isn't it? Uh, well, what I do is I would um, want to clean up my side of the fence first. So yeah. I would first use the embodying stuff to clear the resistance, clear the attachments, clear the conflict, embody the virtues that that relationship has occurred to invite you to embody. See, until you've um, done that, there's a high chance you're going to recreate the same issue in the next relationship. Uh, because life keeps bringing us the same stuff until we've embodied uh, the, what life is actually inviting us to step up, wake up, and show up into the embodiment of. Uh, and so, yeah, like I say, um, I would clean up your side of the fence, make sure you've done that, and uh, and then it'll be very obvious uh, whose issue it is and uh, if it's if it's done or not. Mm-hmm. Really, really, really good piece of advice. Love that. Hope that helps, Ellen and my love, because I know that's something you've been struggling with for a little while. Um, all right, Sandy. I think we've we've so totally run over time, but I mean, I don't care <laughs> as long as you've been all right. I think I Starbucks might be open to, sleep, to you now. Yeah. Hey, in the morning here. I just don't yeah. know how I'm going to get to sleep. I'm buzzing after this conversation. Well, no, it's five <laughs> o'clock for you now, so Starbucks is now open. So you just may as well start your day. <laughs> I just wish I, 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 coffee. I just coffee. I just I just wish I did, but it's just never something I've ever drank. Um uh, and my one new favorite thing. The coffee club that everyone's involved with. That everyone loves coffee, but I just you know I I don't know, maybe I, I should do some uh, embodying on, on, on it. <laughs> maybe no, you just keep drinking your herbal teas, Sandy, that's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <It's> fine. <laughs> Listen, honestly, just such a pleasure. I feel very blessed to have had you on the call today. Really, really grateful. Thank you so much. I get back to England uh, on Wednesday and I'm around for a few days. So if I'm around your neck of the woods, I'll definitely give you a a, a call. Yes, yes, you must. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Look, have a gorgeous day. Enjoy the beautiful sunshine. Um, What a great idea right before Christmas to go and get some sun. Um, Mm -hmm. And, yeah, thanks again. And, uh, ladies, as always, you know, we do this call every Monday, nearly for a year now. I don't even know where the year's gone. Um, wow. Uh, yeah, I know, right? It's um, ev- without fail, never missed one. Um, but, um, ladies, as always, so it's Monday. It's your chance to set your week up with self-love being your number one intention. So, you know, have a think about what do you want to achieve this week. What's this week about for you? I hope, hope, hope on the back of this call, it's something around, you know, letting this moment be enough. It's something around living in freedom and holistic harmony and letting go of resistance and attachment. And and I'm really hoping you'll give um, Sandy's little technique there around courageous contentment a go. But um, And buy his book as well because it's awesome. Um, but, yeah, just, you know, consider, you know, really use, just take a few moments this morning to set your week up. You know, what do you want from the week? How could you love yourself more deeply? Who do you want to be spending time with? Who don't you want to be spending time with? How do you desire to spend your time, you know, full stop? So really just take a moment, consider what a really beautiful self-loving way would be for you to spend your week, and then commit to it. Go out and do it. Um, intention is everything. So with that, I'm going to love you all and leave you. Thank you, Sandy, and um, this Thank recording you. will be, so anyone that's a member of the Self Love Hub, the private Facebook group, um, this recording uh, will go in there in the files tab along with all the other recordings. There's loads of really inspirational stuff in there, so um, so grab it, ladies, and yeah, thanks, Sandy. Have an awesome day. Thank you. All righty. See you later. See ya. Bye. Bye.